Hey, Tubies, it's Lord Bob Hickman here. It is so awesome to be with you guys tonight. Well, here we are. It's eight o'clock, a little after. I'm a few minutes behind tonight. And we're going to have the witching hour. I'm just so glad you guys are here with me. Give me just a moment. I got to get our chat going. Uh, tonight, it's going to be just us tonight. Uh, Lord Tony and Lady Angela both have work schedules that are preventing them from being here tonight. But you know what? We love them. They'll be back with us next week. So I hope that, uh, you know, you guys will, will just bear with tolerating Psychic Bob tonight. Of course, I know that this is sometimes annoying to you having to put up with me for a whole hour. <laughs> but it looks like we got a great turnout. Let's see here. Oh, we got Carol Pettis is here. Fairy Magic's here. Shadow Lander. Timothy Gallagher. Uh, Lynn O'Dell. Horror Beauty FX. Kai Kamara. Wicked Dreams. Yay. Thank you guys for being here. This is so wonderful. I am so excited to have all of you here. Well, thank you for coming out tonight. And as I said, if you just tuned in, it's going to just be Lord Bob tonight. Uh, Lady Angela and Lord Tony are both working this evening, so that's uh, preventing them from being here. But not to worry, we're still here with you guys. Anyways, hope you can see me, hope you can hear me. I'm just so glad you're here. Oh, Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. Good to see you, darling. Love you, too. Blessings to you, dear. And there's Darla's here, Timothy Gallagher, Melanie Miller, Emily Gat. Oh, my gosh. Gav's here all the way from the U.K., how many people we got from Europe in the in the chat tonight? If you're from England, the UK, anywhere uh, in Europe, give me a shout out. <laughs> I really appreciate you guys staying up late tonight. Well, I'm telling you, you know, even though it's just us, you know, I think it's special tonight. And, you know, look, I want to show you my shirt I'm wearing. Is that not cool? This is a witch. It's a guy, and he's down by a stream, and he's gathering herbs. Isn't that wonderful? And tonight I'm wearing my beautiful onk. This is an onk with a little aquamarine crystal in it. Isn't that beautiful? I just love it. I love the onk, you know. Uh, but I'm just glad you're here. And, you know, I just, you know, hope you guys are doing well. It's been a really busy week for Psyche Bob. I've had a lot of readings. I want to say thank you to all of you who have been coming out for private readings with me. It's been a, been a lot of fun. And I've enjoyed it. Thank you so very much here. Let's see here. Oh, Mark Laws is here. Hello. Thank you. He loves my shirt. Yeah, Lady Angela has one of these too. We have we have matching shirts. I bought her one because I just loved it. I said, oh, if I love it, she'll love it too. Thank you, Carol. That's very nice of you. Carol likes my shirt also. Well, you know, guys, I tell you, as I said, you know, it's been a busy week. But I'm just glad to be able to be here with you. I've had readings today, and so that's why I'm a few minutes behind. But I do appreciate you guys being here. And, you know, like I like to say, every Friday, you know, give me five or ten minutes. Because sometimes when I start the broadcast, if there's a technical problem, we can be delayed. So if you come here right at eight and we're not broadcasting, please don't leave. Just hang on for a few minutes because it's usually a technical problem, okay? Oh, there's Alexis. Alexis Williams is here. I haven't Jeanette Kennedy's. Oh, Jeanette, you're from Scotland. Wonderful. Alexis Williams, saving up for real. Oh, I'd love this, the chance to sit with you. You know, Alexis, I should probably explain to people because we have a lot of new people here at Spirit Channel. Uh, for those of you who are new, just tuning in, I am a full-time professional medium. I've been doing private readings professionally for over 20 years, and it is my full-time work. I'm very fortunate that I'm able to, to have it as a full-time career. And uh, I never, you know, take my readings for granted. Um, and for those of you who are interested in what a private reading is, a private reading is you and me one-on-one -on -one for a full hour. And during that hour, we get to look at everything. We look at your past, your present situations, your future situations. Uh, I connect you to your spirit guides. I bring over messages from that. Uh, I also bring over deceased loved ones and friends messages if they come through. Um, we look at your life mission, your theme, you know, what you're here to do. And, uh, you know, I answer all your questions. I cover a lot of information in the reading. 
We cover your past lives, you know, your soul contract, all of that. So I cover a lot of stuff. And I would love to sit down and read for you. And if any of you want to get on my schedule for a private reading, hi, Laura M. You're here. Billy Atchison's here. Hey, Billy, good to see you. And Raven Fisher's here. Yay. Uh, guys, forgive me. It's hard for me to see the chat without my glasses. So if I say your name wrong, please forgive me. Um, but just, you know, if you want to get on my schedule for a private read, we can make that happen. And as I said, it's one-on-one, -on -one, you and me for an hour. We can do that by telephone or Skype uh, or in person. So what you want to do is contact my office, 571-483-2112. And we'll get you on the schedule. Or you can write to me an email. We'll have the email link and information on my website after this video uh, at readings at robert-hickman.com. And also my website, www.robert- like a little hyphen, hickman, H-I-C-K-M-A-N.com. And we'll make it happen. So I'm just glad you guys are here. Okay. Let me see. Got a lot of a lot of people chit-chatting here. Okay. Gavin Hines did a bit of crystal shopping. Oh, very nice. Congratulations on your find. And Witchy, hey, Witchy Jim's here. Good to see you from Colorado. All right. Timothy Gallagher's in Portland. Okay. Amy Crafts is here. Wonderful. Welcome. Welcome. Amy Bell's here. I'm so thankful for all of you. You know, your support every week makes this show go. And I am very thankful. I never take it for granted, you know. So um, I'm just glad you're here. You know, tonight um, I thought we could maybe talk a little bit about fairies, about the fae kingdom. And I have some things that I want to share with you here and show you. And I thought we'd, you know, we get into that here in just a minute. But before we get into that, um, people have been writing me asking about my books. And I want to just go real quickly through that. Yes, I am a published author. And if you want to get my books, you can go to my website. Again, the link will be below this video afterwards, uh, www.robert-hickman.com. Oh, there's Madam Della, Master Psychic Witch is here. I love you too, darling. Blessings. Thanks for being here. Um, and I did get your emails. I've just been crazy busy, but we'll talk for sure. Um, but for my books, for those of you who are interested, I have a number of books out. This is my book, Messages from Rose. And for those of you who were here yesterday, or maybe you weren't here, last night we had a seance, our Saturday night seance, and I channeled. And a lot of times Rose is my spirit guide. She'll come through in their seances. This is a book about my work as a trance channel medium, uh, Messages from Rose. So you can get that at my website. Uh, also over there we have Ouija Mysteries, which is about my work with the Ouija board. And we got Psyche Bob's book of Wiccan Wisdom. And soon we're going to have a book on astrology that I'm working on. So I'm working on that. Hopefully by June, we'll have our astrology book out for all of you. And I think it'll be fun. We're going to talk about the sun signs and what those mean in the zodiac. So definitely, you know, check my website. That's where all the latest information about me is. I'll be posting over there soon some updates. I'm going to be doing a big public appearance on April 23rd with the radio station WRQX FM radio. I'm going to be at their psychic mix and mingle night where I'll be doing readings and doing meets and greets and doing photos and autographs. So definitely you want to come out. I'll have more about that this upcoming week. Okay. But I'm just so glad you're here. Oh, look, yeah. Dalva Brando's here. Hi, Carol's here. Joey Dart. You guys are great. Thank you so much. For, for all your wonderful support, you know. Uh, as I said, we're going to talk tonight about the Fey Kingdom. And I'm just curious, um, you know, some of you I know are Wiccan and you work with the Fey. And, you know, maybe you've never thought about it. And some of you here tonight will say, Bob, are fairies real? Is that for real? Is that just a myth? Well, I hate to shatter a lot of materialists' reality, but, you know, that's what I do. Um the fae kingdom is real. The old English term is the fae, F-A-E, and it's believed that that word comes from the word the fates. It goes back to ancient Greek mythology that there are beings of other dimensions 
that can cast a fate on humans. Now, when we talk about fates, it doesn't in the sense, the fatalistic sense that the fate control us and we're totally dominated. But it was believed and is still believed in many places that the Fae are very sacred and powerful people. Uh, they're spirits connected to the earth. They protect people's gardens and crops. And you know, back in the olden times when agricultural society was so much more vital, you know, if your crop went bad, you might starve for the winter. Many people knew that there were spirits of the land, the Fae people, the fairies, and they would make offerings. And it was very, very big series still, especially in the Celtic cultures. Um, for those of you in the UK, you may know that the, in Ireland particularly, they have various mounds, and also it's in Nordic countries as well. Maybe in England, I remember it being in Ireland. I don't remember England, but maybe British in England can tell me. But talk about the, um, the Fae where they had literally their mounds of earth, and it was believed that the Fae inhabited under the mounds. And people would go to the mounds and they would offer they would offer milk, you know, and bread and put sweets and treats at the Fey Mounds. And this is an old, old ancient tradition. Uh, they used to call it the blot. In the, the Nordic countries and Germanic countries, it was called the blot. And people would go to the mound and have a blot ceremony where they would offer to the, the ancient ones. And uh, hi, Olive Green. Good to see you. Thanks for being here. And... Uh, but, you know, this, this offering to the Fae, uh, as I said, is ancient. And I think that those of us who practice modern-day Wicca, we would do very well to explore the Fae and explore that connection to the Fae. Now, you know, a lot of times people, when you talk about fairies, you know, people think that the Fae are little ones. Look at this little Fae I have. Isn't this precious? Can you guys see this? Now, isn't she adorable? And so people think of the fairies as these little diminutive, you know, three, four inch high people. It's true, there are some fae that look like this, okay? I've seen them and, and pictures of them as well. But do you know that the fae, don't let, even if you see a little fae like this, you know, don't, uh, don't assume that they have no power because believe me, if a fae, if you get on a fae's bad side, they could curse you and who knows what they can do. I've, you know, they're old stories. Some of them may just be tales, but I've heard stories of people who have crossed the Fae. Oh, my God, Madam Della, God bless you. Madam just, Della just gave me a gift of $50 to the show. Darling, that's very kind of you. Thank you so much. And that's going to go to help keep this going on. <laughs> she writes, super uh, support Robert Hickman's spirit channel. Love. Love, Bob. His energy is incredible and infectious. God bless you, darling. You know, it's not hard to have good energy when you love what you do, you know? And Della, Madam Della, you you love what you do. I know you do a lot of spiritual work and media work as well. And, you know, I think it's, um, it's a calling. You know, as I always say, this is not a job. It's a calling. So, but anyways, thank you, ma'am. Talking about our fae, though, but as I was saying with the little fae, you don't want to just assume they're all like this because some fae are full size as humans and they could walk right up to you and you wouldn't even know that they're fae, you know. And there's an old saying, you know, not to sound biblically fanatical here, but the Bible says, be careful in entertaining strangers, for in so doing, you may have entertained angels unawares. And, you know, this could be said about the Fae. They're mystical beings who come into our presence, and we should treat all people with respect, but especially strangers, you know. Now, you know, as I said, that the Fae can take a lot of different forms, and I could probably speak six hours on the Fae. But to show you some images of what the Fae can look like, now, as we showed you, just to give you some, some, some you know, contrast here, so here's a little fay, four inch high fay, okay? Cute, precious, kind of like Tinkerbell, okay? Yeah, that is one form. But look at this. Fay can also be males because there's male fay and female fay. 
this is an image here. This is by Amy Brown, who I am crazy about. Maybe you guys know her artwork. I collect her artwork. This is, sorry for the glare, it's wrapped in protective plastic till I get it free. But this is a very tall male fay. And look, he has giant wings and he has horns and his face is painted very much in the Celtic tradition. And notice the big owl behind him his guardian, he travels with the owl, and his staff is the crescent, it means he connects to the, the moon energy, the goddess. And uh, the fae, you know, this is a great, I think, picture because this demonstrates that the fae really can be like full-grown people with a lot of power. Now, he looks like a warrior. You wouldn't want to cross him, would you? Now, see, you know, the people that go around and do stuff like deforestation and you know, littering. Somebody, they're going to answer to this type of fay. Because when you throw away that that trash, you know, the other, I have to tell you just, in fact, yesterday I was going down the road and I saw a group of guys, they just chucked paper cups out into the side of the road and littered. Oh, it broke my heart. It was terrible. Uh, but it made me think about the fay. And I was thinking, you know, that must break the heart of the fay, you know. And so we want to honor the fay. And... Um, I thought you would enjoy this, this picture here, okay? Now, you know, speaking about books, we're going to show more pictures here in just a minute, okay? Yeah, he does look badass, doesn't he? <laughs> there he is. I'm telling you, the fae can be powerful. You know, you want to keep this on your good side. Keep this fae on your good side, okay? Definitely. Now, you know... When we're talking about the fae, as I said, there are literally thousands of type. Um, there's the good fae. There are also evil fae. Um, they call them the trumping fairies. The trumping fairies are the good fae. They're the ones who go in parades, and they go out, and they travel in groups, and they're lighthearted. They're still very powerful. But then there are those that are called the, the dark elves or the dark fae. And, you know, in all things, and this is a metaphysical principle, as above, so below. And everything that exists here exists in the spirit realm. So we have good people on the earth. We have bad people. We also have good people and bad people in the spiritual realms, which brings up the whole issue. And this is a whole other topic also is, are the fae of the earth realm or are they of the spirit realm? And this is a question I get a lot from people. And... The truth of the matter is, is that the Fae are really a bit of both, okay? They inhabit the earth and take care of it, but their frequency is a little higher than humans, so they can blend into different realms. They can go to the astral and come back and forth. Many people speculate that the Fae land or the fairy land, fairy land's an actual real place, is right on the edge of the etheric, meaning where the etheric realm and the earth realm divide is where the fairy land is. And I have to say, I think there's truth into that from the different sightings and different reports. Now, if you want to learn about the fae, here's a book I really recommend. This is one of my favorite books. It's an old one. I think it's still in print by Edane McCoy. And I'd recommend you check this book out. It's called Fairy Folk, A Witch's Guide. This is hard to see, but up here it says, A Witch's Guide to the fairy folk. And it's by Edane McCoy. Uh, let me see if I have it. Here's the cover page. This may be easier to read than the cover. There it is. You guys can look at that. And there's the author, Edane McCoy. She writes a wonderful book. Gives a whole encyclopedia of fairies. Gives rituals, how to connect with fairies. Uh, just amazing, amazing, amazing book. So I would recommend you get this, okay? Uh, because this book will give you an insight. Look at the picture of the little fae down here. And what's interesting is they're all different types of fairies, and it just shows and illustrates the fact that the fae are, are as multiformed as humans. You know, when you look on the earth, we've got white people, brown people, black people, yellow people, Asian people, Caucasian people. We're all a blend, okay? And that's how it is in the fae kingdom. There are all different races, different sizes, different looks, different people. <laughs> Witchy Jim just said he's got another book to add to his list. I tell you, you know, just when I say I'm not going to buy another book, you know, my house literally overflows. 
I have to have another. And this is one I would recommend that you get. It will give you a good grounding in faith. Look how thick it is. I mean, this is like a two-inch thick book. It is chocolate. There's not all pictures. It's pretty much all text all the way through. So it covers detail after detail after detail. Okay. But um, somebody just wrote, Stephen Lazayet wrote, uh, did the Fae protect your privacy when they live with you? You know, that's a really good question. Um, excuse me, Stephanie. I called you Stephen. Stephanie, very good question. Um, I have not heard of anybody saying that the Fae necessarily protect privacy, but I have heard that they protect, you know, the house from damage, from burglars. Uh, they, you know, will frighten off somebody if they're, trying to break in. So I, I guess maybe really actually we could say they do protect your privacy because, you know, the Fae don't like a house where a lot of strangers are coming. They're kind of protective over the families. In fact, one of the Fae that, that you might want to work on learning about is called the brownie, the house brownie. And they're small little men or women about two, two and a half feet tall. And they live, a lot of them in Scotland. And uh, Jeanette Kennedy, uh, you said you were from Scotland. Uh, are you familiar with the brownies up there? I think you guys know about them. Uh, but in fact, I'll read a little bit about the brownie here to you. Uh, let's see if I can find it here. Hold on just a second. Da, da, da. You know, I should have marked this page before I started and I forgot. It's hard to remember to do everything, isn't it? You know. But uh, the brown, here we are into the bees. Yeah. Um, hold on just a second. Oh, here it is, brownies. Okay, here's this. It's on page 189 of this book. This is brown. This is in the, the encyclopedia part. And it says brownies, I'll read a little bit to you guys here. It says brownies, land of origin, Scotland, other origins. These fairies are also known in Canada and the United States, certainly brought over with Scottish immigrants. Well, I can tell you, I know they're in my area because I've actually had people locally come and ask me about this. And they said they've seen little brown men or dressed in brown clothes running through their house. They thought they were poltergeists. I said, no, they're brownies. And I live in Alexandria, Virginia. And interestingly, Alexandria was settled by the Scotch and Irish. So we have a large population here. Um, their other names include, okay, here's some other names you may know them by. The house brownie, that's the one I always learned. Little man, he is called Nis in Denmark. In Russia, they are called Domovoy and have been known to cry like a banshee when death is approaching a member of their chosen family, and they warn of fires, okay? In North Africa, they're called yumbos. The Chinese call them choa fum fai. The English sometimes know them as hobs, H-O-B-S. Their element is earth. And here's a little description. I'll read this to you. <laughs> Jeanette Kennedy said she was a brownie many years ago. That's right. You know, there's the brownies, which are the, you know, the scouting troop. And uh, they have the little brownie as their symbol. Okay. And parents, so this is what they look like. Parents and temperament. The house brownie of Scotland is one of the most benevolent and kind fairies you could hope to meet. They are very small dwarf fairies who always appear as males with black holes coal black eyes. I thought there were female brownies. Maybe I'm wrong about that. Where did male brownies come from? Hmm. <clears throat> they wear little suits of green, blue, or brown and small caps made of felt. Their ears are slightly pointed and they have long, nimble fingers. The time, time they're most active is all night, all year long. And I'm going to read just a little more here. Hi, Kelly Aldred said, where is video guy from? I'm from Alexandria, Virginia. Okay. Uh, the house brownie looks for a deserving human to aid, one who is humble and gracious and is, in, is good in nature to other people. 
and he hunts for a warm house, one in which he feels he can be comfortable. That means one with no cat. <laughs> don't have a cat. They don't like that. <laughs> they like the attic, woodshed, or cellar of a human's home the best. Keep these areas for them and feed them well to keep them. Their favorite foods are milk, honey, ale, and cake. The brownie is said to reward kindness shown to him by helping out around the house and on farms by bringing food and firewood and by chasing away ill-meaning spirits from your dwelling. So see, they protect you from evil spirits also. And I suppose that could be assumed as people as well that have ill-meaning spirits, okay, like earth people too, as well as spirit beings. Brownies are still common to the Scottish highlands and on the hit the Hebrides Islands, but are rarely heard of elsewhere. Because of their generous nature, brownies hate misers and cheats and cannot tolerate lying and detest pretentiousness. Like their cousins, the leprechauns, they like to cobble. That means they make shoes. Uh, but they will work on a pair of shoes rather than only one. Because brownies are completely nocturnal, some people believe they, like vampires, can never appear in sunlight. Brownies can go abroad in the daylight, but they prefer not to. Anyways, this goes on for like four more pages, so I just want to touch in on it. Um, <laughs> Gavin Hines said, ale. Yet, Gavin, you know, there's so many fae in England. I think you should set out some ale, see if you draw a fae. I like that. But I, I do know, as I said, I've had people call me, literally local people, who have seen brownies in their house. So they are in my area. I haven't seen one here, but I'd like to draw one. You know, speaking of brownies, there's another fae that I wanted to show you that many of you are familiar with that are very similar, actually, to the brownies. Also a fae of the earth energy. You recognize this? The gnomes. Here we got a gnome. Isn't that wonderful? Look at that. So you see the gnome is also a fairy. And a lot of people, you know, especially in the um, Germanic countries, claim that they have gnomes that come to their house and help with their yard and their garden. And uh, anyways, I've loved the gnomes since I was a kid. And I actually have a collection of gnomes. My mom actually has them, but this is one of my little gnome statues I got recently. Isn't he great? Look at his happiness. Gnomes are, are similar to brownies in that they're the earth. They wear pointed caps. Now gnomes generally wear red caps and blue caps. Uh, and sometimes green. I haven't heard of them dressing all in brown because the brownies tend to wear more brown, but the gnomes tend to wear brighter colors than the, the brownies, but they are of a similar nature. Physically, they're about the same height, about a foot to two feet high. And they love also the offerings of ale and milk and cake. This is one of the things, if you want to draw a fairy to your home, you know, you might want to set up a little, make it a low shrine, like don't make it on a high shelf. Set a low table to near the ground and make offerings. Like you can do the offerings in your house. Um, but generally, from what I've uh, read and understood, most fae will simply accept simple things like milk and some cake. You know, you could, um, you know, bake a cake or they also like fresh bread if you're into bread, bake it. Try to give them the best that you can. Uh, now, you don't, you know, most of the people who serve the Fae were poor country people in the past. So they're, you know, they're not expecting fine gourmet foods, but give the best you can. If you can go to the baker and get a fresh bread, maybe you can't make bread or go to the baker and get some fresh cake. Make an offering, you know. Some people make offerings to the Fae every day, some once a week. But, you know, whatever you do, be consistent with that. Because the Fae people uh, will reciprocate in kind, okay. Now, there's one thing I've heard about the Fae that you should also know, is that you never say thank you to a Fae. In the Fae culture, if you say, oh, thank you for doing the housework or thank you for helping me with that, they interpret the words thank you as that you're looking at them as servants. Oh, thank you for working for me. And it's also considered dismissive. It's like, okay, thank you, goodbye, you can leave. Now, I know and you know that when we say thank you, we don't mean it that way. But in their culture, that's how it's interpreted. So you never 
say thank you to the faith, no matter how good they are. Just simply leave an offering. And you can say words like, you know, for example, we welcome you here whenever you can be here. We were, you know, we're glad for, for all that you offer, but avoid literally the words thank you. I know it's difficult because it's natural to us to say, but in their culture, it doesn't work, okay? Okay, Madam Della just said, the food talk is driving me crazy. <laughs> Fresh bread, the bakery, you know, I know. Every time I read these books, I have the same thing. I'd like get cravings for all this stuff. <laughs> You know, speaking of faith, this is another thing I want to touch in on. Humans, it's believed that in the ancient Celtic world that humans and fae could intermix and interbreed. And that there are humans who are part fae. And I have to tell you, I have been told, now let me back up, it's a long story, I won't go into all of it, but I was adopted. And I ended up meeting my birth family about 20 years ago. And in my birth family, I was told that we descend from the Irish. And some people have claimed that we have fey blood in us. I believe that because there's a high degree of psychism in our family. The people are of smaller stature. Um, and so it could well be true. I personally feel that I may have fey blood in me, that I'm part of the fey, at least partial, at least a small amount. So, you know, the Fae, in a sense, for many of us, are not just some strange beings. There are, there are relatives, our ancestors. So, um, <laughs> Amy Crafts 2012 just said, I'm short. Maybe I'm a gnome. <laughs> you know? Well, see? Could well be. You know? Now, let me show you some other pictures here of the Fae as well, because she's like this. This is another... Uh, Amy Brown one that I have and is this one I have some that are actually signed by her do you guys know Amy Brown she's a, a very famous artist uh, and I actually have some originals of her sign signed this one I don't think this one's signed but I have to find some I have I have a lot I just have to frame them but here's one of my favorite pictures can you guys see that isn't that beautiful this is a woman a female fay. And she's got antlers on. This means she's honoring the horned lord. She's carrying a staff with the moon. But there's her guardian owl protector. Isn't this beautiful? In fact, I don't know if there's a name. I think these are all titled. Hold on, where are my glasses go? I'll read the, the title of the print to you if you want to look it up. Yeah, Amy Bell says she's familiar with it. She has beautiful art. Yeah, I agree. Uh, this one is called, oh, it doesn't have the name on it. Shoot. Oh, here it is at the bottom. I can't see it. I think that says. Well, I have to look it up. Anyways, if you look online, you can find these pictures, but search for Amy Brown, Okay. Uh, her prints are kind of expensive, you know, but they're collector pieces and they're worth the money. Um, but there's another one. And this looks like a full-sized fay. Remember I told you they can blend in with humans. Now, not all of them have pointed ears, okay? Some of them look literally so much like human you can't tell. This one, she has pointed ears, okay? And she's got her beautiful robes and her staff. And she's by a tree. Isn't that lovely? So there's one of them. Thank you. Oh, Katie McKenzie, God bless you, darling. She just donated $4.99. You're so sweet. Thank you so much. Billy likes the pictures as well. Thank you so much. Hey, Armani, Armani. Velez is here. Welcome. Glad you're here. Hi, Shadowlander. Shadowlander, you had a good question. What about the merfolk? That's a really good question. Um, the merfolk are also fey. Uh, they are the fae of the sea, the fairies of the sea, and they are real, okay? Now, interestingly, if you look on YouTube, there are some people who actually film have films of merfolk in the water. Some of them are fake, but I'll tell you, some of them are real, and some of them you can see, because what's interesting is the merfolk um, are literally, just say so you don't, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, mermaids 
are beings that have the lower half from the waist down of a fish and the upper half of a human. Um, these are ancient beings. They're older than time itself, like all the fae. And they are real. See, so we have fae of the sea, which would be the mare folk. And then we have fae of the land. Okay, so these are the, the gnomes, the elves, the garden pixies, all of them. Um, it's believed that there are the fae also of the air, that some of them inhabit the skies and protect the, the atmosphere. You don't hear much about that, but sometimes you'll see fae with wings, and it's believed that they tend to inhabit a lot of the sky realms. Speaking of wings, some fae have wings and some don't. Not all fae have wings. In fact, speaking of fae, it doesn't have wings. Here's another fae uh, picture is one of one that doesn't have wings. This is an earth fairy. And you'll notice the beautiful, if you guys can see this, the green, beautiful green robes. She's also by a tree and she's got beautiful, look at her big pointed ears. Can you see that guys? I know the lighting's not the best here. But you can kind of get a sense of this. She's standing by the stones. This would indicate her earth energies. She looks very Celtic, you know, connected to the earth and she's by a tree. Look at her beautiful auburn hair, just lovely. This is an earth fae who does not have wings. Now, speaking of the fae that have wings, um, here's another picture of a fae that has wings, or two fae, I should say. They might be sisters or best friends. I'm trying to keep the glare off. Can you guys see this is another, all these are Amy Grant prints that I've collected. I just have to frame them. They're right now in protective plastic. Isn't that beautiful? And for many people have seen the fae, a lot of times they actually do look like the, the artistic renderings, you know? All right. Uh, Melanie Miller, I missed the name of the book, Bob from What is it? Hold on, Melanie. Good question. Again, to learn more about these fairy folk, a witch's guide to fairy folk, by Edane McCoy. Hold on, let me put it. I can't speak enough about this book because I just, I just love it. I really do. Here you can see the title page for those who didn't catch it. A Witch's Guide to Fairy Folk, and the author is Edane McCoy. Okay, so there you go. Now you know we we're talking about the Fae with wings. Also, here's another. This is one of my favorite. This is probably my favorite print by Amy Brown. I just love this one. And there's a fae. Let's see if I can get the glare on it. There's a fae sitting on a cliff with a dragon rising up. Can you guys see that? I know it's kind of hard. Let me back up a little bit. I'm trying to tilt it so there's no glare. You can get closer. You can see there's the fae right there. She's sitting with her wings up. Her hair blowing, and there's the night sky, and a beautiful dragon that's coming to greet her. I think her artwork is just magical, you know. Investigative journalist, thank you so much. Love you too. Thanks for being here. You know. Yeah, Debbie Webby loves that dragon. I love it too. You know. And uh, so there are a lot of different ones. Here's another one that you might enjoy of a fact. I can't believe I've been collecting these for years. <laughs> I've got quite a collection. Here's another one of a male fae. I love this one. I remember the name of this one. This is called Jack in the Green, I believe. It's, I thought it was on the back, but it's called Jack in the Green. So that's by Amy Brown as well. So, yes, fae are male and female. Now, interestingly, this book said that the brownies are only males, but I, I don't believe that. I think they're female brownies. How could they, unless they self-produce? I don't know. Anyways. Because you know, as we know in the Wicca, all things are reflective of divinity. And we have male energy, we got female energy. So, you know, that energy, I believe, in, from what it shows, carries over into the, all the kingdoms of the earth, especially including the fake kingdom, okay? So, now, oh, here's a good picture that illustrates different sizes of fae. Here is a large fae. Communing with a small fae. This is again an Amy Brown print. I think all my prints, most of them are Amy Brown. And you see the little fae here in her hand? 
that's coming to greet her. So that's a diminutive small fay. And here's a large fay. Now notice her big pointed ears. She's wearing feathers, but that's an ear there. And notice on her brow, the crescent moon. And the crescent moon is an ancient pagan symbol. In the ancient Celtic days, they would tattoo uh, on their brow or paint the crescent moon. And in the order of the purple cord, we do that as well, you know. Um, I have a video, actually, you guys might want to look up on the crescent, wearing the crescent moon. I think I called it Wiccan Bindi. So if you go to my videos and you search Wiccan Bindi, B-I-N-D-I, -I, uh, you can see my original video about wearing the, the crescent on the brow, you know. But there's so many beautiful works by Amy Brown. I, I tell, I'm just crazy about them. Uh, here's another one that's a, one of my favorites. This is a, a fae sitting on a blue mushroom. Or it's like a blue. It's kind of hard to see. It's, let's see if I get my lighting right. Hopefully, you can see that. Hopefully there's no glare for you guys. Isn't that beautiful? A fae sitting on the mushrooms. Which brings up, interestingly, a good point. Uh, Madame Della just said something. Here. She says, cannot get enough of the incredible vast imagery within Wicca, within the metaphysical. Absolutely. You know, I like to say Wicca is a visionary faith. You know, it really is. And the mysteries of the spirit are there for all of us, but we have to take time. You know, we have to take time to, to look for it, to seek it out and to meditate. All of the great artworks come out of meditation. You see, and this is why we all, when you want to connect to the fake kingdom, you want to spend time in meditation, you see. Um, yeah, somebody said somebody was pagan. I think Amy Brown is a pagan, you know. Um, do you know anything about dragons? Are they, This is Stephanie Loesa. Do you know anything about dragons? Uh, are they astral beings? Or they live where the Fae live also? Um, good question. Um, I actually believe, I have an interesting view on, on dragons. And that will probably have to be a whole other show. But I believe that dragons were physically on the earth at one point. They were actual beings. The reason I say this, there are many, um, interesting, strangely, the, the historical Christian faith, uh, though it did a lot to destroy paganism, actually has actual accounts of various people encountering real dragons and stories of how they dealt with them. Um, the story of St. George. There's also a wonderful story about St. Martha, which I believe is a historical tale, that when Martha first went out to do missionary work, St. Martha went to France, and there was a dragon that was terrifying the townspeople. And she went in and prayed with the dragon and became friends with it and brought it out as her pet. And many people, like in outside of, you know, in historical texts outside of Christianity, have written of this story and it said that there were witnesses. So I believe that they are real. I also believe that today the Fae um, have pretty much exited the earth. I think they've all, for the most part, died off. Uh, but they do live in the spirit realms in the astral plane. And um, I believe that they do connect with humans spiritually and their power and energy can be called upon. Because what you have to remember is that all life is eternal, okay? And so as all life is eternal, everything can live on. And so the Fae live. But they're more of the spirit today than the earth. But they have earth energies and power still. Mm hmm. Kelly Allred said that they're learning about dragons. Um, okay. Oh, Veronica Klepsarek says, I do dragon Reiki. You know, Veronica, I'd like to hear more about that. Maybe you'll be a guest and we'll have you on to talk about that. I think that would be a fascinating program. Okay. And Katie McKenzie asks about unicorns. Do you think they existed in the physical plane? Yes, I do believe that unicorns also existed in the physical plane. A lot of the creatures that they call mythological, I believe have a real basis in fact. Where are they today? Again, like the dragons, I believe they're predominantly in the astral plane. 
Um, but at one time, they were on the earth. Good question. Uh, hold on, I'm trying to see the chat because I got to put on my glasses here. Bob's eyes aren't so good. Um, yeah, Kelly already just said, I asked you if dragons were real. Well, there you go. Now you know they, yes, they are real. Okay. Um, Shadow Leonard says, yo, Bob, I've just started learning to read and write in the Atlantean alphabet. I'm combining that with Norse runes to make my own mystical script. Absolutely. Uh, you know, this is what I love about the, the occult tradition, the Wiccan tradition, is that it's not a stagnant, frozen faith. Our faith is one that is a living faith and is evolving. So when you're developing your own spirit communication, your own languages, you're advancing the cause for all Wiccans every, everywhere. Excuse me. So absolute congrats. I want to hear more about that, you know. Um, the Atlantean peoples were amazing and brilliant people. And as I have received channelings from Edgar Casey, he has confirmed to me that, that the Atlantean power and influence is going to rise on the earth again. And I think we're starting to see that. Now that we're in the age of Aquarius, you know, it's a lot of that Atlantean energy is coming back. So I think we're right on the cusp of queers. I don't think we're fully into it, but we're getting signs of it, you know. Um, yeah, what was it? I, hold on, so I can't say. I think I got a question here. Um, <laughs> Madam Della just said, you called us alive and well-informed. Yes, that is so true, you know. Um, but, you know, let me actually, hold on. i got some other prints here to show you here before we go. Here's another one of my Amy Brown collection. Isn't this cool? Look at this. This is a face sitting in a tree wielding a lightning bolt. And you see, so that's like a full-size fae. Again, it goes back to like what we were saying earlier, that the fae can be, you know, full-size people and wield a lot of power. I think this is a great example because um, – I do think the Fae have, have a closer connection with the elemental energies. In fact, I would encourage you next time you, you know, do a ritual circle, invite the Fae. Like when you call the quarters, you know, and you like say call the quarter of, you know, the north, the earth quarter. Say, you know, we welcome the gnomes, we welcome the Fae of the earth to join us with the guardians of the watchtowers. You see? And in this way, you're bringing the Fey into your life. And, you know, who doesn't like to be invited, you know? Uh, when we have our Wiccan gatherings, we should remember, you know, not just to call guardian spirits, but call the Fey. They may serve as guardians as well, you see? And so every quarter you can call, you know, at each quarter point you can call the Fey in. I would really encourage that. Thank you, Sean. Rodriguez says that they like the picture. Um, here's another interesting picture of a fae. I think this is a fae. Yeah. You know, the fays are believed to be tied to the ancient pagan fays. Uh, upside, Carol just said, Lord Bob, can we do a write for the fae next week? Yeah, we may well do that. I think that would be good. I'm going to talk to Lady Angela. I think we can do that. Great idea. This is an interesting one. It looks like it's a temple, like an outdoor grove with a statue. And hold on, I'm trying to get the glare off of it. Can you see this girl sitting? She's sitting on the little bench at a statue. It's a stone statue of a creature. Maybe one of the gods of the Fae or just a sculpture. But I think it's really kind of cool. Isn't that neat? This is also an Amy Brown. I wish I didn't have this glare. Hopefully you guys can see it okay. I'm going to go close up. You can see the girl sitting there in her long velvet dress, just reclining at the statue. And there's the statue. Kind of exotic looking creature, isn't it? Oh, look, I just noticed it's hard to see here, but she has wings. If you look behind her on the left one, she's got her wings up. She is a fae. Isn't that beautiful? 
So there you go. Okay. You know, but you know, one of the things I would encourage you to do, you know, if you want to work with the Fae is set up a little shrine. It can be really simple, just a little table, maybe put some flowers on it and maybe a little statue of like a Fae. You get a little, I bought this one at the dollar store, this little statue. And, you know, put a little statue on it and then set up some offering bowls. It can be that simple because, you know, by putting a statue, it tells the Fae that you're honoring them and they know that that's their place, you know. Or if you don't want to get a statue, you know, the Fae, you could also have a gnome or a brownie statue or even a print. You could frame a picture like of this and put it up and have a Fae in that place so that they know that you're honoring them. Because, you know, they do look around. They watch, you know. Hold on. I think I've got, I've got a lot of different stuff here. And I may have another picture to show you. I can't remember what I've got in some of these envelopes because I just pulled them out. Here's an interesting one. This is, an, this is not an Amy Brown one, but this is another one. In fact, I'll take it out of the envelope so there's no glare. This one has been out of its envelope. This is one of a fae crouching down in the grass, you know, watching. See her wings on her back? I don't know who the, the author, the, the, the painter of this one is. But see, she's got in her hands little chanting beads. So the fae are very spiritual. They attune to the earth. They pray to the great mother, the great goddess, and the great lord the horn lord or the sun lord and the moon mother, earth mother. The god and the goddess and all their aspects are, are, you know, are loved by the fae. So that's another picture for you. Okay. Anyways. Oh, look at that. Somebody, Veronica is putting up a fairy garden. If it ever gets warm in Illinois, I'm hearing you. Lord Tony, in fact, I was going to tell you, Lord Tony told me tonight that he snowed in. It's a blizzard. They're expecting 24 inches of snow. Is that crazy or what? Oh, my God. You know, I'm telling you, it's crazy. Um, so, anyways, there are some of my Fae pictures and statues. And as I said, I love the Fae. I, I think they're really relatives of mine. <laughs> if you see, you see why I wear my hair long? Because you can only see my pointed ears. <laughs> Anyways, oh, it looks like it's been snowing where Alexis Williams is. Oh, my God. I thought we were into spring, but, you know, here in Alexandria, it's still very cold. So, you know. Okay, Shadowlander just said, hey, Bob, I'm able to speak this unknown language. I'm not sure if it's an actual language. Uh, been able to sing and speak in it since really early, weird, uh, word day in high school. Uh, you know, Shadowlander, this is interesting because it could be even a fake connection possibly. Maybe you're remembering a language either from another life or that's imprinted in your soul. Um, there's a, I forget the name, a glossalia I think is the name of it, which is the ability to speak unknown languages. It does happen. Some people are channels, they channel it, and sometimes it's within you. I believe in genetic memory, and genetic memory says that in our, our genetic structure, we carry memories from our ancestral lineage. So it could well also be a genetic connection to an ancient Fey culture, an Atlantean culture. Uh, but if you're drawn to it, you know, I would say, you know, what I would do is work with it by trying to record it if it comes through, through you know, record voice recording or write it if you can. Um, definitely try to get it on voice recording. It's very interesting because a lot of times linguists can listen to vocal recordings of unknown tongues and determine their origin. So you may be speaking something that comes from like, you know, ancient uh, Sanskrit or something as well. Very fascinating. Okay. Okay. And Melanie said she's sick of snow. Okay. Uh, Kelly Aldred said, what about the praying mantis? I don't know if I'm coming in on a conversation, but um, 
praying mantis is that's a whole nother show. <laughs> I will come back to that. Stephanie says, can you invite a fae or a gnome at the same time in your house, but putting a statue of a fae or a gnome as an invite? Or do they not like that? Oh no, from what I understand, actually you can do that. Um, the fae, all the fae get on. There's no, from what I've heard, there's real no enemy ship between the fae or the gnomes. And yes, if you put a statue out, you can put it outdoor as well in your house to welcome them. So yes, whenever you put up a statue, they're very sensitive and they'll recognize that you're honoring them. And uh, even if they look a little different from the statue, they won't be offended. They'll get the message. Um, remember, you have to remember that these are ancient races that have been around humans for, for thousands of years. So they are pretty well versed to our ways. Okay. So anyways. Oh my gosh, guys, I just look at the time. We're almost at our hour. Can you believe how fast an hour goes? Oh my God. Timothy Gallagher says, dress your gnome in Star Trek gear. <laughs> They'd probably like that. I'm sure they're familiar with our modern television. You know, they can't help but know about our world. They're very connected. And so this is one of the things I want you to remember tonight. Take with you as you go, is that the Fae are an ancient race of beings. Uh, we should honor and respect them, treat them with reverence and dignity. You know, don't let their size, if they're small like a little gnome, don't let that be a, something say, oh, I can just kick them over. No, no, no. These people know the ways of magic. Humans learn their magic from the Fae, and we owe them a great debt of gratitude. So honor the Fae, whatever form you connect to them. Invite them in, welcome them, and give them gifts. Let them know that they're they're part of your world, and they will start to help you. One more thing I should say. Many of you know I'm obsessed with jewelry. Tonight I'm actually wearing my Ankh. And uh, if you love jewelry, you're going to have to accept you work with the Fae. They might pinch your jewelry. They might nick it and run away with it. If the Fae steal your jewelry, don't fight them. Let them have it. They'll always bring it back, okay? But if you get greedy and you don't share your jewelry with the Fae, uh, they may, you know, not come around anymore. So, you know, especially you women, a lot of you have little earrings. I've heard a lot of women tell me that the Fae nick earrings. They love the little sparkly earrings. So, you know, buy extra sets and be ready to lose a few along the way. It's just how it is. Anyways, guys, I want to say thank you. Thank you for being here. You guys are the best. I love you. I hope we got in enough of your questions, and I hope this was helpful for you tonight. But I love being here with you, and I'm so honored to, to have the chance to be with you. And um, listen, also got to remind you before we go, if you want to get some face stuff, also stop over to Lady Angela's website, rarewiccaspells.com. I'll have the link in the box below this video. She sells uh, spells for fairies, she sells fairy pendants. She sells little statues of fae. You can get your fairy stuff going. And if you go there, when you check out, it'll say, do you have a coupon code? Type in the word spirit channel, all one word, spirit channel, and you'll get a discount. She gives discount for people who buy through spirit channel. So as members of spirit channel, you get a discount. And I would encourage you to, to do that, you know. Um, you know, I didn't bring my fade jewelry out tonight, but next week we may go on with some more on this because there's a lot more to talk about. And I'll show you some of my fade jewelry next week. And we're going to try to put together a ritual. I think Carol's idea of a of a ritual for the fae would be a really great idea. So let me talk to Lord Tony and Lady Angela. Let's see if we can coordinate that. I'm not going to promise it because just depending on schedules, but we're going to try, okay? Either way, be back here next week. We'll have another show. And, uh, you know, we'll have our witching hour. By the way, help me out. After this video finishes processing, please go back, like it, favorite it, share it with your friends, put it on Facebook, post it around. We want to get the word out about what we do here. You know, Spirit Channel is a place of refuge for spiritual seekers. And that's why I created it. And I need your help to make sure that it all goes. So please help me out by liking it, favoriting it, share it with your friends, and let them know they can come here and join our group. Uh, good night to all of you. Thank you, Lyle. You're saying good night. Good night to all of you. Yes, 
Oh, and one more thing. Make sure to be here tomorrow. Tomorrow's Monday. You know what that is? <gasps> horoscopes. That's right. We're going to have horoscopes. We're going to cover all the major transits as well as individual sun, sun sign horoscopes <clears throat> for the week. So make sure to be here tomorrow for that. You guys are best. I love you. Sending blessings to you. We'll see you back here next week, same time, same place. And we will continue then with ah, the witching hour. Thanks, guys. Love you. We'll see you then. Blessed be.